the Trump campaign saying it's been hacked by what it is calling foreign sources who are trying to interfere in the 2024 election. I'm joined now by CNN contributor Lulu Garcia Navarro and CNN political commentator Essie Cup. It's great to see both of you here on the Saturday afternoon. Uh, Essie, let's start first with you. There are shades of 2016 to this, as our, uh, as our reporter Jeremy Herb was just kind of laying out. Uh, and we have known that foreign actors want to interfere in the U.S. election. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge problem. It's not a problem that we're unprepared for, but it's good to be a constant reminder that hacking disinformation, this is a this is a big part, especially by foreign entities, this is a big part of why as voters we need to be really educated, diligent, vigilant, all, all the things, um, because so much information is flying at us from so many different places, especially on social media. It's hard to know what's real. It's hard to know what's faked and now fake. And now with these leaks, we're, you know, potentially getting access to things that we're not supposed to see. Um, you know, any campaign would be very upset to learn that they're sort of, you know, their secret weapon, you know, the plans that they have are being shared potentially with the press and then potentially with with voters. Right. And it still remains to be seen. It's very early in all this. What was in this hack? What are in these documents? Uh, Lulu, uh, former President Trump famously asked Russia in 2016, Russia, if you're listening, uh, find Hillary Clinton's emails. Now the Trump campaign uh, has been has been hacked. Uh, if you're the Trump campaign, how serious of an issue is this? How concerning is this? I mean, it's hugely concerning, not only for the Trump campaign, but for any American. I mean, this, if indeed it is a foreign government trying to interfere in our election, uh, we should all be concerned about that. I think Politico at this point has been very judicious in reporting about uh, getting these documents, but so far not distributing them. And um telling law enforcement about this uh, so they can investigate it. I mean, you know, the Trump campaign is trying to spin this, saying that this is potentially Iran trying to attack uh, the president, uh, former president's campaign because of his own actions. We don't know really who is behind this yet. We do know that America has many enemies. We do know that there are many countries in the world that want to interfere in America's elections, China, Russia, North Korea. I mean, the list is very, very lengthy. And we all, as um, Essie was saying, need to be very vigilant. Yeah, and we will certainly be following the story as we get uh, more information. It is truly a, a breaking story at this point with, with new information coming uh, as the as the minutes and hours go by. I, I want to talk, Essie, a little bit about this campaign and the strategies on both sides in particular. We saw the former president uh, holding that news conference this week and then this rally last night. He's really been going after Harris, uh, questioning her blackness, uh, questioning her intelligence. I want to play a clip and then and then ask you a question on the other side. Kamala is grossly incompetent and, in my opinion, has a very low IQ. But we'll find out about her IQ during the debate. OK, let's find out about her IQ. So, Essie, both of these campaigns want to grow their coalition. That is how you win a race. More voters vote for you than the other person. So I'm curious why the former president thinks that, that attacking Kamala Harris in this very personal way is going to bring in new voters. Do you think that's a good strategy? Yeah. No. And listen, I... I host another show on another network called Battleground. And, and the point of it is to talk to swing state voters. I talk to them every day and they don't care to litigate Kamala Harris's race. They don't care about childless cat ladies. They have problems and they want solutions. And if you're Trump and J.D. Vance going into these swing states, the states that will determine this election, talking about Kamala Harris's IQ or um, you know, punishing people who don't have children. These are not solving problems that they have. Welcome back to Politics Nation, when Vice President Kamala Harris picked Governor Tim Walz to be her running mate this week. He joined a long line of Minnesota politicians to achieve national fame, including vice presidents and presidential nominees, Hubert Humphrey and Walter Mondale. Another politically prominent Minnesotan was Jesse Ventura, a former professional wrestler and Navy veteran who ran successfully for governor in 1998 on the Reform Party ticket. 
Former Governor Ventura joins us now. He is currently the spokesman for Jesse Ventura Farms. Thank you uh, for coming on today, uh, Governor. L l let's start with this. You once held the same job as Governor Walls, and you followed his career. What are your impressions of him? Well, uh, first and foremost, let me say, Reverend Sharpton, it must have taken you and Jesus to get me back on MSNBC. Because <laughs> I never thought I'd be on this network ever again. And it took two people like you two, I think, to achieve that. But having said that, I'll tell you about Governor Waltz, what I see about him. I'm a complete independent. And when he won his first election as governor, Within 24 hours, he called me and set up a meeting with me to pick my brain. No other governor's ever done that, Republican or Democrat, but Tim Waltz did. And what that showed me, Tim Waltz is the kind of guy who's out for success, and he will reach across the aisle because he came to me, the ultimate ultra-independent in Minnesota, to seek me out to get any information that would help him govern, and I happily did so. And I'll tell you what else he did. 20-some years ago, I tried to legalize cannabis marijuana. I lit the match. Well, the match simmered for 20 years and finally became a flame, and Governor Waltz called me, and he said, Governor Ventura, you need to be in my office Monday at 11. I'm going to sign into law ending the prohibition of marijuana in Minnesota. It was your idea. You're still alive. You should be there to take, uh, to take credit for this because you're the one who done it. That's the kind of person Tim Waltz is. Wow. Well, former uh, President Trump's vice presidential pick, uh, J.D. Vance, who is a former Marine, has led the Republican charge attacking Governor Walls over his 24 years of military service. Vance has accused Walls of stolen valor for leaving the National Guard in 2005 to run for Congress, just a few months before his unit was deployed to Iraq. As someone who, has, who understands how military service works, you definitely do, What's your response to this? My response is this. First and foremost, any po point after 20 years, you can retire when you want to. Second, Vance is missing the point. What he ought to be asking is this. Why is the National Guard being shipped out and fighting in foreign wars in other lands? That isn't their role. Their role is to be here in our nation, protecting us inside our own country. That's, sub that's why they're called the National Guard. What happened was this. George Bush and Dick Cheney, when they started their folly with the Iraq war, uh, they couldn't bring they needed bodies. They couldn't bring back a draft. It would be political suicide. So what did they do? Bush signed an executive order now sending our National Guard over in the world combat zones. That is ridiculous. That is for the regular military to be doing that. The Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, not the National Guard. And besides that, Governor Waltz already had 24 years in. He's an E-9. An E-9 doesn't go out on patrol. An E-9 doesn't lead a demolition raid. E-9s are the highest enlisted belonging to that particular unit. They come out with the commanding officer, and they have a rapport with the, with the CO and the, and the head enlisted. It's a, it's a relatively honor position more than it is any else. So Walt's deploying and Vance is worried about that. I think Vance is doing a disservice to the United States Marine Corps because I know a lot of great Marines and Marines show respect. That's the one thing you get out of a Marine is respect. And Vance ought to look in the mirror and behave like a Marine. Let's now bring in Dan Moraine. He's the author of Kamala's Way, Aid an American Life. So you've researched and followed all of the vice president's campaigns since she was running for office way back starting in 2010. What's what in what ways do you think she's changed her style when it comes to her campaigns? And I wonder when you think about this sort of how has those other runs prepared her for this moment? Well, First of all, she's always run as an underdog. She ran as an underdog when she ran for district attorney in 2003, and she ran as an underdog when she ran for attorney general statewide first time in 2010, and she won both times. And, you, you know, the 
Harris, who I've seen on television, I haven't seen her in person until today, is um, is the Harris I remember. I mean, she's out there. It seems like she's having fun. She's smiling a lot. She's um, laughing on occasion. And she's really tough, too. So it's, it's kind of the Harris who I recognize from her campaigns in California. Yeah. And you've said that she's been underestimated in the past. Do you think that's happening again? Well, uh, you know, people who have underestimated her end up losing. So uh, if, you know, I mean, I don't doubt but that uh, former President Trump has a strong campaign team around him. I doubt they're underestimating him she, or her. She's, uh, you know, she's a, she's a formidable campaigner. She's charismatic. She comes into a room. She lights it up. She's got a big smile. She, you know, she's and, and her policies are pretty interesting right now. I mean, I so folks, what you're seeing here is Trump getting absolutely smacked across the face with two b brutal surprises, really three brutal surprises tonight. One, of course, is this whole info dump from his campaign. Now, of course, we don't necessarily know what's in there. We may never know, because if this information was obtained in, say, less than legal manners reporters may be reluctant to share it uh there's a whole debate online right now as uh you know the ethics of this is that if they know it was criminally obtained not just to get some random package but they have reason to believe it's the product of criminal retention do they have a right to report it if it's still public interest and we don't know if we're going to see what it is but in any case it is devastating for trump this is a massive surprise and it's a but his email scandal Right. It's very reminiscent of 2016, except now, very karmically, it's on Donald's head and not Hillary's. The second surprise is Jesse Ventura. And this is brutal for Trump for a bunch of reasons, because Jesse, in many ways, he's he's a bit he's a bit eclectic, let's say. But in many ways, he embodies progressive politics. Uh, he was a big fan of Bernie Sanders. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, people that saw similarities between the two guys. And he's yet. He's, he's not one to make a lot of endorsements. He often stands aside because he doesn't like most Democrats. He doesn't like any Republican, as far as I can tell. And he doesn't like most Democrats because most Democrats to him are, and I don't think he's fully wrong, too, too close buddy-buddy with big corporations and all of that. But he came out and not only tore apart Donald Trump, but made positive comments about both Walls and Harris. Uh, he's saying in, in this interview and in other interviews, like, look, the boys have had enough turns. It's a woman's time now. We we men have messed it up. Let's let's actually give a woman a chance at the helm and see how she does, right? And for Trump's anti-establishment credibility in a swing state, because that's where Ventura is from, that's a big blow to lose, to have an anti-establishment voice go with Harris and Walls instead of anti-establishment J.D. Vance, it's a massive blow. And as seen there at the big, at the end, just very quickly, don't underestimate Harris. Because if you do that, she's going to beat you seven ways from Sunday. 